Shots fired on campus in the middle of family weekend. We have the latest. Plus, the chances for severe weather are on the rise. Find out when and where it might start. And President Biden takes an aim at ghost guns. This is OU Nightly. Hello, thanks for joining us for OU Nightly. I'm Zaria Oates. And I'm Dylan Rivera. We begin tonight with a deadly scene from the heart of campus. It happened in the middle of spring family weekend. The campus alert system texted phones with an alarming message. Word quickly spread of a shooting that left one man dead. OU Nightly's Jesse Klinger joins us live with the very latest. Jesse. Right now, there are more questions than answers about the shooting that occurred right behind me near the intersection of Lindsay and Elm. We don't know the details of exactly what led to the shooting, who was involved, or if anyone will be charged with a crime. On Saturday morning around 1130, police responded to a reported shooting on the intersection just west of the South Oval. But when officers arrived, they say a man was already dead. A 36 year old male um, approached a vehicle that was stopped at the traffic light um, there at that intersection. Um, the driver of that vehicle, a 33 year old male, um, told officers that the individual approached the vehicle and a disturbance occurred. Um, during that disturbance, the driver did produce a firearm and shot the individual. Nearby drivers got out of their cars to try and help and police say everyone remained on the scene and at least one car had a child passenger. Norman police are not confirming if anyone in the shooting is tied to the university, and OU students say the whole situation is very concerning. I was honestly just in my dorm, and I had gotten a bunch of group chats from people talking about somebody was shot, somebody was run over, and so I didn't really know like what was going on, and then, I don't know, it's, it gives me chills a little bit to think about it. But I, I still feel like I want to avoid that area or not really be around there after that happening I, I don't know it's just kind of weird awesome. you don't think it can happen at your school you know so it's it's definitely a very strange uncomfortable feeling now information from the Norman Police Department does remain limited but what we do know is that nobody has been arrested or charged for a crime in this incident and OU police say campus is safe we will continue to bring you updates about this story as more become available reporting live Jesse Klinger OU Nightly Thanks, Jesse. Another possibly dangerous situation is brewing right now is the severe threat of weather. Meteorologist Juliana Mejia joins us right now. Juliana, over the next two days, people need to be weather aware. Yes, certainly, Dylan. Sorry, you got it on the on the head there. So we do have chances for some storms in far southeastern Oklahoma tonight and in the overnight hours, but that's going to stay well out of our area again, way in the corner of southeast Oklahoma. Tomorrow's what our focus is right now. You can see this large area uh, spanning from central Oklahoma City, central Oklahoma, all the way into the Tulsa area, McAllister, of uh, this enhanced risk for severe weather. This is all very conditional depending on how tomorrow's conditions play out whether or not these uh, storms fire up tomorrow. So again, we're going to keep a close eye on these conditions as they progress going into tomorrow. We also have extreme fire conditions in the next couple of days. We'll have all the details and explanation of this in next weather. Thanks, Juliana. A deadly crash at the start of family weekend when a man was hit and killed on I-35 Friday night. The incident happened just south of the Canadian River Bridge, close to the Riverwind Casino exit. State troopers say the man is from Blanchard and was trying to cross the interstate when he was hit around 10.55 p.m. Friday night. The driver of the car was not injured. We checked with Oklahoma Highway Patrol today, and they say there is no new information in the case. Something unusual on the South Oval this morning as students made their way to class. Members of the Church of God say they came to campus to spread their message outside of Dale Hall. According to the group, the goal is to peacefully share their form of Christianity. However, there were mixed reactions to their presence on campus. I don't agree with how they're doing it. What they stand for, I'm completely neutral on, but how they're doing it I find very upsetting. And you know, we do have the First Amendment, so, so where if, if you want to stand in a, in a public place and preach, I mean, people aren't obligated to listen to you, but I think you're allowed to do it. The group did not comment on if they would return to the South Oval in the future. 
Now the latest on the war in Ukraine. New details say that Russia's focus has shifted to the eastern parts of Ukraine. The mayor of Maripol says 10,000 Maripol citizens have died, and he is afraid there are more than 20,000 more bodies being discovered. He told the Associated Press that Russian forces are using mobile cremation equipment to dispose of bodies. Meanwhile, Austria's chancellor says he had a face-to-face -face meeting with Russian President Putin and that he accused Russia of war crimes. A recent surge in gun violence has led President Joe Biden to adopt new gun regulations. Kenzie Eiserman has that story and the rest of today's national headlines from the News Center. Kenzie. Thanks, Dylan. After another deadly weekend, pressure is being put on President Joe Biden regarding a recent surge in gun violence. Today, President Biden presented a list of reforms about gun control for Congress. His main target for regulation is ghost guns. People are able to make these guns at home, making it difficult to trace or regulate. Classifying some of their parts as firearms could change that. These guns are weapons of choice for many criminals. We're going to do everything we can to deprive them of that choice. And when we find them, put them in jail for a long, long time. Biden also discussed the importance of mandating background checks for all gun sales and funding crime prevention and policing. As the investigation into the January 6th insurrection continues, new details are surfacing about Donald Trump Jr.'s supposed efforts to overturn the 2020 election. In the days leading up to the election, Trump Jr. told Trump's supporters that if his dad lost, it would be because the radical left cheated. But while he publicly warned against fraud on the left, his private text message to White House Chaff Chief of Staff Mark Meadows foreshadows a legal strategy that his father's allies would eventually launch. This text is parts of thousands of texts from Meadows the committee has already has in its possession and is already using as a part of the investigation. And people who do not identify as male or female can officially put it on a form of identification. This makes the Department of State the first governmental agency to make this offer on a document. The State Department will now list X as a marker on U.S. passports. This designation is defined as unspecified or another gender identity. More information is available at travel.state.government gender. And the search for a new Gerber baby is happening now. For the first time this year, Gerber, Gerber will match the prize with a $25,000 donation to the March of Dimes Maternal Infant Health Program. Still in Zaria, back to you. Drivers on two wheels are taking a charge at mental health awareness. Coming up on OU Nightly, find out how an annual event encourages bikers to get on the road to raise money. Plus how an extreme shortage is impacting Oklahomans and what you can do to save a life. Coming up when OU Nightly continues. The annual Ride to Remember event brought together bikers to honor the Oklahoma City bombing and raise money for emergency responders. OU Nightly's Harry Robinson found out how those on two wheels are helping with mental health. There was thunder in the air this weekend at OKC. It wasn't the normal springtime storms. It was the sound of just under a thousand motorcycles hitting the streets for the Ride to Remember charity run. When we started 15 years ago, there was probably maybe 18, 20 people, and this last year we had 700 bikes. Been a firefighter 32 years. You know, it's no, there's no really better feeling than to be able to do something like this for you know people that we work with for you know our whole career. The bikers first rode to the Oklahoma City bombing memorial to pay respects before embarking on a poker room, where the riders draw cards at each stop and the best hands win cash prizes. Every single winner donated their cash prize to the event's emergency services charities. Doug White, founder of the Emergency Responders Assistance Program, said that the right to remember is crucial for funding help for those suffering with mental health and PTSD. This ride here raises us somewhere between 10 and 15,000. Each seminar I put on is about 21,000. So this gives me a massive lift to be able to serve more. The emergency responders, unfortunately, uh, they have things like dysfunctional families, divorce rates are very high, chemical dependency, and unfortunately, suicide is terribly high still. Without this, without the funding, it's hard for us to do our work to help them get their lives back. As the 27th anniversary of the Oklahoma City bombing draws closer, around a thousand bikers around me have all donned their leather jackets for remembrance, celebration, and charity. For Unitely, I'm Harry Robinson. 
The event takes place every year and charities have urged all bike and scooter riders to get involved. Oklahoma is nearing an extreme blood shortage, and despite a number of blood drives in the state, people just aren't showing up. According to the Oklahoma Blood Institute, its blood supply is under 50 percent. Due to the pandemic, more blood is needed, but less people are getting out to donate. OBI has tried so far as to offer free incentives and giveaways. However, the lack of students at universities has made the biggest impact. Where we get the most units of blood to help our communities and make sure that our hospitals are secure is going to colleges, going to universities, and those opportunities are gone and it is absolutely impacting our opportunities to collect blood. Just one donation can save up to three lives. And for more information on where you can donate, visit OBI.org. Well, a Norman nonprofit is looking to combat hunger and teen homelessness in Norman. Find out how you can help support a local student with food and toiletries when OU Nightly returns. And severe weather is a serious threat throughout this week and an added threat of high fire conditions. OU Nightly's Juliana Mejia keeps us updated on the weather. Welcome back to OU Nightly. So getting right into it, talking about some chances for severe storms tonight and tomorrow. Uh, so tonight you can see kind of this discrete isolated cell here far southeastern Oklahoma and then tapering its way out. So really not too much of our focus right now for our area. What we're paying attention to is tomorrow. So pausing right here. Well, we wanted to keep going, but going into tomorrow, you can see not too much going on. The models are are being a little bit inconsistent. That's because these are conditional chances for severe storms going into tomorrow. So again, we have an enhanced risk for severe weather that spans from central Oklahoma into the Tulsa area, and this is all dependent on whether or not we break through the cap. And what is the cap exactly? Well, that is a layer of relatively warm air aloft in the atmosphere and whether or not storms initiate depends if we get enough warming from sunshine at the surface to break through that with buoyant warm air uh, because that's going going to allow the instability to instigate those storms. So you can see again that will shoot up through the warm layer and initiate big, strong storms. But again, this depends if we do or do not have cloud cover that allows enough sunshine to heat us up. So if these storms fire up, this is what you can expect. You can expect chances for some isolated tornadoes, uh, but we are mainly paying attention to large hail up to baseball sized hail with those storms. Also, this all comes into play as well with an, a dry line that's going to push through from the west and the intense moisture that we have that's going to fuel potential storms out here in the east. And so additionally, this is where fire weather comes into concern because of those extremely dry conditions, dew points dropping into the single digits out in the panhandle. We're also expecting very hot temperatures pushing into the lower to mid 90s out in western Oklahoma. So that's where you can see we do have an active fire weather watch throughout the day tomorrow. Here's your reminders for how to be safe, especially paying attention to not throwing cigarettes out and do not park on dry grass. Additionally, so going into the rest of the week again, we're focused on severe weather chances tomorrow. Those are very conditional chances. Otherwise, we remain quiet until maybe some more chances for some showers into the weekend. We'll keep track of that as the week goes on. Otherwise, we taper out and tame out for the rest of your week. Thanks, Juliana. Well, a local nonprofit organization in Norman started their Adopt a Senior program this week. Pantry Partners is a nonprofit organization dedicated to fighting chronic hunger and teen homelessness. The nonprofit has 15 graduating seniors on their list, five males and 10 females. They're requesting gift cards, body sprays, water bottles, wallets, five by seven frames and fun grad themed gifts to help struggling graduates. If you miss the deadline, though, no need to worry because they accept donations year round. Well, after a few more dominant showings, OU softball is breaking records. Yeah, Tyler DeLuca joins us in sports with a recap of the Sooner series with Texas Tech. Tyler. Yeah, guys, I don't think this team is ever going to get tired of breaking records. I will tell you the new heights they reach next. And earlier today, we heard from some OU football coaches. Hear what was said next on OU Nightly.
Welcome back to OU Nightly. I am Tyler DeLuca and it is time for sports. Call the fire department, get a fire extinguisher, somebody do something because softball is still on fire. The Sooners lined up against Texas Tech this weekend with the score of the last game being, and this is not a typo, 21-0. OU set the record for the best start in NCAA history with their 36th win. Defense, defense, defense. That has been the side of the ball most hit on during spring football, and it is to be expected with the defensive-minded head coach coming in. The safeties coach for the Sooners, Brandon Hall, expressed the importance for stopping opposing teams. Every, every time that ball's in the air or that ball's on the ground or whatever, that, our job is to go get that football. And so Coach Venables is adamant about turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. All great defenses uh, create turnovers, and I think the things that he's done here in the past, things he's done at Clemson, obviously, He's always been one of the top in the country as far as turnover goes. So there's not a day goes by that he doesn't emphasize getting the ball back. And, and if, you know, if the ball's on the ground, we own that football. And OU baseball visited their in-state rival in Stillwater this weekend for a series against the number four team in the nation, OSU. The Sooners upset the Cowboys in the first game 8-7, but OSU made a big comeback in the second game to achieve an 8-7 win of their own. In the rubber match, it was all Pokes winning 9-4 after taking control early. And the number two ranked OU women's tennis team just can't stop winning. This weekend they traveled to Morgantown where they dominated the Mountaineers 7-0. With the dub, this team has officially clinched at least a share of the regular season Big 12 championship. Bedlam is up next for the last road match of the season on Thursday. And speaking of championships, the official details for the Women's Gym National Championship have been released. OU will enter as the overall number one seed to face Utah, Alabama and Minnesota in the first session on Thursday. KJ Kindler expressed the importance of staying together as a team to raise the trophy. One of our main focuses has been on team chemistry and um, making sure we're kind of all in sync when it comes to that. I, I know I've mentioned before that I feel like that's um, one of the key components to winning a championship. Um, and certainly something we can never stop working on. So uh, that's definitely been an emphasis for our team. The Masters have come and gone, and the number one player in the world reigns supreme. 25-year-old Scotty Scheffler shot 10 under to secure his first major championship. The win did not come without a little bit of a scare from Rory McIlroy. McIlroy made a big push yesterday, but was unable to completely close the large gap that Scheffler had built. And the NBA play-in tournament is set to begin tomorrow night with the 7 and 8 seed matchups. In the West, the Timberwolves host the Clippers with the winner going on to play the Grizzlies. And now to the East, the star-studded Nets will be hosting the Cleveland Cavaliers. The loser of this game plays the winner of Charlotte and Atlanta, who is led by former Sooner Trey Young. That Eastern matchup takes place on Wednesday. And speaking of former Sooners, how about Austin Reeves last night? In the last game of the regular season for the Lakers, Reeves put up a crazy triple-double. Here are the stats. 30 points, 16 rebounds, and 10 assists on the night for the OU product. What a fantastic way to end his season. And make sure you tune in to Sooner Sports Bat tonight. we got some very special guests from the men's gym team in studio. That is at 7.30 tonight on Valley Sports, Oklahoma. Dylan and Zaria, back to you. Well, thanks, Tyler. If you've ever wanted to go to space, your dream could become a reality. Yeah, see how some U.S. citizens got to take the journey of a lifetime straight ahead on OU Nightly. I'm Carolyn Vaccaro at the OU Nightly Update Desk. A federal jury has just convicted a former Virginia police officer of storming the U.S. Capitol with another off-duty officer during the January 6th riot. Former Rocky Mountain Police Officer Thomas Robertson was convicted of all six counts, including charges that he interfered with police officers at the Capitol and entered a restricted area with a dangerous weapon. Robertson's sentencing hearing has not yet been scheduled. That's it for now. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Caroline. Well, I feel like going to space is a dream a lot of people have, don't you think? You know, I don't like the idea of going to space, but uh, the Dragon spacecraft uh, left the Kennedy Center 20 hours for a 20-hour flight, and three customers and one former astronaut were on board. Yeah, the 10-day trip is being backed by Axiom, a Houston-based startup company. Well, let's hand it over to Juliana one more time for a quick recap of this week's forecast. 
Yeah, so once again, Dylan, Zaria, we're looking at kind of a couple of different things. So again, chances, conditional chances for some severe storms tomorrow, late afternoon, evening. And then behind that will be followed by a cold front. You can see that dips us about 15 degrees or so going into Wednesday and Thursday. Also on top of that, extreme fire conditions for Tuesday and Wednesday. So be mindful and obey burn bans. Otherwise, things kind of get a little quiet for the rest of the week and going into your Easter weekend. Maybe some chances for some pop-up showers. We'll keep track of that throughout the week. Thanks, Juliana, and thank you for tuning into Unitely. We're live every weekday from Gaylord Hall on the campus of the University of the Oklahoma. We'll see you back here tomorrow night live at 430. Good night.